Today I will tell you how to read a chest x-ray. Chest x-ray is one of the most common x-rays that we come across as physicians. So today I will tell you what is a general methodical approach to read a chest x-ray. So let's begin. Chest x-ray is normally taken as a PA view with the patient standing at a distance of 180 centimeters with scapula rotated away from the lungs and in full inspiration. So the first thing that you have to do is to hold the film correctly. Just imagine that the patient is facing you. So this becomes the right side and this is the left side. Right and left is usually marked in x-ray. Do not always assume that heart is always on the left side. When you are reading the x-ray on bedside, then do remember to check the name of the patient. Begin by saying which part of body has been x-rayed and the projection or the view. For example, this is chest x-ray PA view erect posture and this is chest x-ray AP view. It is very important to tell the body part which is being x-rayed. Now let me tell you how to differentiate a PA and AP film. While taking an AP film, the machine is kept in front of the patient and plate is kept at the back of the patient and x-rays move from anterior to posterior. While in case of PA view, the plate is kept in front of the patient and x-rays move from posterior to anterior. The standard chest x-ray is PA, but in emergency conditions or if the patient cannot be moved, then we do AP chest x-rays. AP films are usually marked by the radiographer, so do check the markings. If you are not sure, then look at the scapula. If scapula overlies the lung fields, then the film is AP and if not, then it is PA. This is because to take a PA view, patient has to ideally place his arm around the side of the plate or stand with hands on the hips. We should not comment on heart size in an AP film as the heart appears magnified in AP view. It is very important to check the technical quality of chest x-ray before starting interpretation. This can be remembered by the mnemonic RIPE, R -I -P -E, where R stands for rotation, I stands for inspiration, P stands for projection which we have already discussed and E stands for exposure. Now let us check how to See if the patient was rotated while taking the x-ray. If the film is not rotated, then the medial end of clavicle should be equidistant from the spinous process. If the medial end of any one clavicle is farther away from the spinous process, then the patient is rotated to that side. Rotation can make heart and mediastinum look larger or smaller than it actually is and one lung can appear more whiter than the other. Now comes the second point which is inspiration. As I already told, we should take an x-ray in full inspiration. Now to judge the degree of inspiration, you have to count the number of ribs above the diaphragm. Usually the midpoint of right hemidiaphragm should be between 5th and 7th anterior ribs. So here let me tell you how to count the ribs. The posterior ribs are more obvious and appear horizontal while the anterior ribs are more difficult to see and they point downwards. One easy way to count the ribs is to identify the first ribs anterior part and then follow it backwards to find its posterior portion. From here you can count all the posterior ribs downwards and trace them to find their anterior ends. If more ribs are visible above the diaphragm, then the lungs are overinflated. A poor inspiratory film or expiratory film can make the heart look larger and give the appearance of basal shadowing. P for projection we have already discussed. Now let's come to E which stands for exposure. To check the degree of exposure, look at the visibility of vertebral bodies through the cardiac shadow. Ideally, in a good exposure film, the vertebral bodies should only just be visible through the cardiac shadow. If they are too clearly visible, then the film is overexposed and if they are not visible, then the film is underexposed. In overexposed film, the lung appears darker, while in the underexposed film, the lung fields will appear falsely white. Now there is one simple way to remember if the lung shadow will appear blacker or darker with a degree of exposure. Look at the shadow cast by air. As you can see, the side which is maximally exposed is dark. So when the lung is overinflated, it will appear darker because it contains air. Now that we have checked the quality of chest x-ray film, we have to start scanning the film for any lesion. Ideally, we should use a decent viewing box and lower the ambient lighting. First survey the x-ray from a distance and then look at it closely. We should use a systematic approach to screen the x-ray. There is a well-known mnemonic called ABCDE to scan the X-ray. Here, A stands for airway in which we check trachea and its branches. P stands for breathing where we check lungs and its edges. C stands for circulation where we look at the cardiac size, the great vessels and rest of the mediastinum. D stands for disability where we look for fractures of, of ribs, shoulder girdle or any other bone visible. 
E stands for everything else, which includes looking for air under the diaphragm, any foreign body, and soft tissues. But I think it requires a little bit of mugging up. So I prefer scanning the x ray from either inside to outside or outside to inside. This requires no mnemonic, is more logical, and works for x rays of other body parts also. So let us start reviewing this chest x ray from outside to inside. First, you come across soft tissues and skin. Now look at this chest x-ray here. You can see subcutaneous or surgical emphysema. Next, you look at the bones. Count the ribs on both the sides. Look at scapula, clavicle, humerus if it is visible. And since we are looking at the bones, we can check the vertebral bodies over here too. Next, look at the pleura and the lungs. Both lungs should be of equal trans radiancy. Try to identify the horizontal fissure on the right side. It runs from high limb to the sixth rib in axillary right. Now look at the pulmonary vascular pattern. Normally, artery and vein branch vertically to upper and lower lobes. The upper lobe vessels have smaller diameter than the lower lobe vessels in an erect chest x-ray. This is due to gravity. While in case of pulmonary venous hypertension, vessels branching upwards become larger than those branching downwards. In a normal chest x-ray, the lung markings are more clearly defined near the center and they become smaller and more difficult to see towards the periphery of the lung. Next, look for any discrete or generalized shadows in the lung fields, which we will discuss later. Look at the costophrenic angles. They should be well-defined acute angles. Next, look at the hilum. The left hilum should be a little higher than the right, but the difference between them should be less than 2.5 cm. Hilum should be concave and look similar to each other. Next, look at the heart and its shape. Check that the maximum diameter of cardiac shadow should be less than half the transthoracic diameter at the broadest part of the chest. The borders of the heart should be clearly outlined. In a normal chest x-ray, most of the left heart border is formed by the left ventricle and most of the right heart border is formed by the right atrium. Now look at the trachea. It should be central but slight deviation towards the right around aortic knuckle is normal. Look at rest of the mediastinum. Apart from heart and trachea, mediastinum contains great vessels, esophagus, nerves, thymus and lip nodes. So we can read this x-ray like this. This is PHS x-ray of Mrs. A taken on this particular date. The film is not rotated and there is adequate inspiration and adequate exposure. The soft tissues appear normal. There is no fracture or any bony abnormality. The lungs are uniformly expanded and lung fields are clear. The heart size is normal. There is no mediastinal shift. The mediastinal contours and hilum appear normal. The trachea is central. There is no evidence of air under the diaphragm or any surgical emphysema or any foreign body. So in summary, this is a normal chest x-ray. Before we start seeing some abnormal chest x-rays, let me tell you an important sign that is very helpful to localize a lesion. This is called as Silhouse sign. It states that an intrathoracic radio opacity, if it is in anatomical contact with the border of heart, diaphragm or aorta, then it will obscure that border. Now let us see the x-ray in case of consolidation. Consolidation in a chest x-ray is characterized by lower or segmental density or patchy shadowing with ill-defined border. The presence of air bronchograms confirm that the density is in alveoli and not in the airway. There is no loss of lung volume in case of consolidation. Now look at the x-ray of collapse. Collapse is characterized by increase in density that is increased whiteness with signs that indicate decrease in lung volume. That is, there could be displacement of mediastinum towards the collapsed lung or there can be elevation of the hemidiaphragm or there can be crowding of ribs. Collapse is commonly found with consolidation. Now look at the x-ray of pneumothorax. The affected side appears more blacker than the normal side and remember, there won't be any lung marking on it. This is very important to remember because this helps us to differentiate it with emphysema. Mediastinum can be pushed away from the affected side. In case of hydro pneumothorax, there would be air fluid level. Chest x-ray of a pleural effusion is characterized by homogeneous dense opacity that is whiteness along with loss of costophrenic angle. There is usually a meniscus present that is there is an upper border which is concave which is higher laterally than medially. You can't clearly see the diaphragm border and there is no air bronchogram. Now look at the x-ray of pulmonary edema. It is characterized by symmetrical diffuse fuzzy shadowing. There is perihilar haziness and presence of septal lines. In acute pulmonary edema, we can see the bat wing appearance of shadowing. 
It's very important to remember what are septal lines. Septal lines are actually caused by engorgement of pulmonary interlobular septal lymphatics by the fluids. It can be seen in the periphery of the lung. It extends inwards from the pleural space. In a chest x-ray, they can be seen at 90 degrees running inwards from the pleural space. Curly A lines are the septal lines in the central portion while curly B lines are the septal lines in the base of the lung. Now look at this x-ray. This is an x-ray which shows cardiomegaly. As already told, cardiomegaly should never be commented upon in an AP chest x-ray. So cardiomegaly is present if the maximum diameter of the cardiac shadow is more than half of the transthoracic diameter at the broadest part of the chest. In a classical chest x-ray of congestive cardiac failure, there is cardiomegaly, evidence of pulmonary edema, evidence of pulmonary hypertension and there can be also presence of pleural effusion. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you.